This is the Skywatcher ST or Star Travel uh, 120 is a 5 inch refractor telescope. This is a short tube, F5 I think it is. I'm using the 5mm SLV Vixen and this and wow, the image is so big and beautiful. <laughs> I cannot believe, of course, it was after several nights of not being able to observe. So I'm a little bit shocked because uh, I'm seeing it again, <laughs> Jupiter is there. Let's see how the other eyepieces is. And this is the Skywatcher near one of seven millimeter. I can see a lot of details on the Jupiter. Two main belts easily can be seen. Uh, you have chromatic aberration with the uh, achromatic refractor, but it's not that severe that it just hampers your view. You can see the and especially when you're near in the center is more tolerable uh, I suppose if you get a longer focal length of this this is f5 this one if you get an f7 or 8 something they uh, have a sculpture and other brands uh, chromatic aberration is more you know under control but this one is a is practically sculpture f5 um, 120 semester star travel um, is uh, is a really wide angle, but with this eyepiece you can see a lot of details. Okay, chromatic aberration definitely here is more than the uh, Sky Watcher Evo Star 90. Uh, this is another refractor that I have some videos about it. It's definitely more here. This is the first time I can see that. Uh, uh, st BST star guide the 8 millimeter is not any better than the Nirvana so I suppose because it's a very wide angle eyepiece 5 millimeter eyepiece uh, f wide angle sorry wide angle telescope uh, sh short focal length is f5 so practically this is really you need to uh, no, go higher magnification than what the 8 millimeter can provide so 5 millimeter was really good I could see a lot of details with a 5mm eyepiece. If I use a border for I can even push it to 2.5mm. Back with the Vixen SLV 5mm. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. I'm going to push it to 4mm Nirvana. Then I will go for 2.5mm TMB planetary. Or I will try the Barlow on this. Just let me bring it. Okay, this is the new one of 4mm 82 degree eyepiece and uh, the amount of detail I can see is equal to the 5mm, just the image is bigger uh, and more comfortable to see also so that's, that's I think 5 or 4 is optimum for this uh, Skowatcher Star Travel uh, 120F5 refractor So now I have used the TMB planetary 2.5mm eyepiece and I can say that the image starts to deteriorate, you're just magnifying the image. The eyepiece is excellent one, I've seen my best views of the uh, Mercury and the Venus with this, better than a rotoscopic, equal to the Vixen HR 2.4, that's what uh, that means how good it is. It's also equal to radian in a mechanical and optical way, in my opinion. However, because this is a very f uh, wide angle, uh, low f uh, of focal ratio telescope, um, but two and a half millimeter. No, you you see image it starts to deteriorate. You see some detail. You know you can see the two cloud belts yet, but four or five was the maximum I recommend to use with this. So no, no lower than that. So if you get this telescope, this telescope is good for sweeping the Milky Way, looking at the I mean star fields of the Milky Way, looking at the galaxies, nebula and such things, global clusters, star clusters. Uh, it's very wide angle, it's F5 is perfect. Uh, it's compact, only 600 millimeter uh, focal length, I think. And uh, it's good. You can use it for planetary view, considering the limitations of it. If uh, my um, eyepieces with a five millimeter or four millimeter are the maximum magn magnification in this condition that I've tested it, uh, you achieve. So for planetary and moon, you can use it 
but you have to consider these limitations. If you want to get a budget uh, on a budget, a telescope which can be used easily for planets, get a Evo Star 90. That's uh, that gives you what you need. This is also a good telescope. You can work with this uh, within its limitations, and uh, it's really wide angle, nice compact telescope. You need a good mount also, of course. When you get it, I think the, it comes with a mount. If you don't have it, you have to get a mount or trap it for it. Or if you have already one, you just use that. Now I have a borrowed the 12 millimeter star guider two times, so it's practically not six millimeter. Beautiful view. Chromatic aberration is there. I must say that all the time is there. But you can see details on the on the cloud belts of Jupiter. That's beautiful. I like it. This is really good. Wow. 8 mm star guider with the 2 times bar low equal to 4 mm. Wow, Jupiter is beautiful. Again, chromatic operation is there. I wish it was not there, but because it's a very short tube telescope, F5, chromatic operation is always there, you feel it. But the image is good. It's a compromise you make for having a wide field telescope that you can use for star fields and other, other things. At the same time, you can use it for planetary with a compromise and the com chromatic aberration but you can have sharp views with this uh, setup down to four millimeter okay immediately after the uh, skull watcher star travel 120 i went for the skull watcher 72 ed and 72 millimeter the details I can see, although it is a very wide angle, you can use it as wide angles, it's ED, it's upper chromatic. The details I can see on Jupiter are more than what I could see in that uh, 120mm objective refractor. So, which one I prefer? If I'm going to spend that uh, 300, 400 pound for 120 uh, refractor, instead of it, I will go for this ED one, that's better even. It's compact, tiny, you can use it for astrophotography if you want. Uh, you can use extension tube if you don't want to use the star diagonal. And then you will have a sharpest view. This is 7mm Nirvana. Beautiful views. You can see more detail and the image is very clear. No chromatic aberration at all. So, if you want to spend money for 120s, uh, go for this one. <laughs> That's better, in my opinion. Your money, of course, you know what to spend. <laughs>